As President Obama struggles with lawmakers to extend the payroll tax, he's taking aim at Republicans who voted against a surtax on millionaires. It's just the latest swipe in longstanding clashes between the White House and Congress. Joining us now to talk more about some of the issues that are most dividing Democrats and Republicans, Alberto Sanchez, staff writer at Roll Call. Thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, let's talk about the payroll tax first of all. How, how is this dividing? Uh, Congress right now straining relationships between the White House and Republicans. Well, uh, it's 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 been very div divisive, but uh, <clears throat> ultimately it will happen. It will probably happen uh, before the end of the year. It expires at the end of the year. Currently, uh, people are paying 4.2 uh, um, percent on the to, on the for, and payroll tax. And uh, Democrats have put on an offer on the table. They want to cut that to 3.1 percent. And uh, the uh, they have to act before January 1st, or it will go back to the 6.2 sure. percent uh, rate. That uh, is typical, and to pay for that, they have offered. Uh, they want to tax millionaires uh, 1.9 percent on tax on millionaires. Uh, that's they scaled that back. Also, they did have a, a component for payroll uh, for uh, employers to pay to pay uh, to cut that in half for pay, uh, for employers. But they uh, they they've dropped that part, and uh, they also the millionaires tax uh, was also scaled back. Initially, the the entire proposal, employers and employees, was a uh, 2.265 billion dollars. Now it's $185 billion. Uh, the 1.9 percent uh, tax on millionaires is also temporary. Uh, the three, the initially, they wanted to make the 3.2 percent tax permanent. It, that now expires after 10 years. And they are also throwing in another pay for, uh, which would they would charge uh, lenders, mortgage lenders, uh, for the guarantee of Freddie and Freddie Mac, which would raise about $38 billion. How do, how do you characterize it? You deal with the Senate a lot. How do you characterize the, the relationship right now, but the working relationship, I guess, between both sides of the aisle? It, it's, uh, it's, right now, election year politics is covering, is coloring everything. So uh, pretty much uh, people are, are in their uh, ideological crouch. <laughs> there hasn't been... Uh, much much legislating at all uh, it's it's been very difficult and, and i think uh individual senators are frustrated but they understand how these how the how politics works yeah and how about the relationship between uh, republicans in congress and the white house and this is just another example here where somebody at some point has to blink to get something done uh according to a lot of senators we've talked to uh it's it the, the white house outreach has been uh minimal uh senator olympia snow told us it's she thinks uh this president's outreach is the worst uh, in, in the six compared to the six presidents she's served with, uh, hmm. and uh, so so it's 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 been it's it's strained, uh, but at the same time, ultimately they know they have to come to a compromise to, in order to get any legislating done. All right, let's talk about uh, the, we'll go back to to the Senate, your area of expertise now, and when we talk about um, you know what it takes for some of the especially on the on the Republican side of things here. Uh, who are they looking for? I know you just you did a profile piece on Marco Rubio in Florida. Is, do you see him as an, an a, a up and comer with a, a bright future when it comes to the Republican Party? Uh, yeah, a lot of people do. Senator Rubio uh, is a very talented senator, very young and uh, and ambitious. Uh, perhaps a possible vice presidential candidate. Um, he is uh, he's definitely somebody who is trying to uh, bridge the divide, but at the same time understands that. Uh, you know, his point is elections matter, so we have to go through this cycle in order to really be able to decide the really big issues that have to be decided. Yeah. What might be a downfall for him, though, the way that other Republicans look at, at his beliefs? Uh, and, and it, it would all center on immigration. He, he, uh, the reason why you would be interested in putting Marco Rubio on a, on a national ticket would be to help win the Latino vote. Sure. Uh, he, has, uh, he opposes the DREAM Act, which uh, some, some immigration... Uh, Strategists believe is going to be the real bellwether about how oh, um, determining how Latinos will vote. Uh, uh, Senator Rubio doesn't think so. Senator Rubio thinks you know it's not one issue that will win uh, the Latino vote. You have to earn it on several fronts. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, interesting to see how uh, it comes about and mm -hmm. how how he'll uh, be able to exercise his. He's down. We'll keep watching him. We'll keep watching the relationship in Congress and, of course, with the White House and the payroll tax coming up. Uh, they have the clock rolling in the White House right now, so just about three weeks to go on that. Humberto, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much.